All right, so now we're getting to the portfolio. So you have two sections of your portfolio. There's the first section, which we're going to do first, is your sustained investigation. And the second section is the selected works. And we'll go over that in another video. So for this section right here, you're going to create a 15-piece body of work. So all the pieces are going to be related. So you're going to decide on what to investigate first. So this is going to be like your idea or your concept. So first you'll decide what you investigate. You need to select something that you can create 15 pieces with and will show progression and growth over time. So for example, um, it could be how technology is taking over humans. Piece 1 may show how technology first started to take over, and piece 15 would show the total takeover of technology. By creating these in order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so on until you get to 15, you're naturally going to show growth because you're going to get better over time, just naturally with your skill as you keep working. The progression is going to be where we would show how that technology started just barely taking over and then it was completely taking over so it has to have those things in there for sure so it says to create the 15 pieces that show practice experimentation and revision so that's going to be important in your pieces to show that you've practiced with different materials and techniques that things are changing throughout your body of work you've experimented with things and that you have revised changed and made things better that it shows a synthesis of materials processes and ideas what that means is like you know, if you're doing something that deals with water, maybe use watercolor so that the materials will match the um, investigation. That's not always super possible, but try to be creative and find some ways that either the materials, the process, or your idea can relate to um, your investigation. And then, of course, you want to show your technical skill, whether it be 2D, 3D, or with your drawing skills, um, depending on which one you're doing. So you're going to upload those to College Board, and for each one, you're going to have to identify the materials that you used, um, and you'll just put kind of like Prismas, um, acrylic, pencil, whatever you use, the processes, if you used cross hatching, you know, wet on wet, wet on dry, um, graffito, um, scrumbling, any of those kind of techniques, and then the size. So you're going to have to make sure that you measure your pieces, so the height and width, and if you're doing 3D, also the depth. And then the last thing you have to do for this section is to write your written evidence. And this is essentially like your artist statement that goes for your 15 piece body of work together. Um, and there's two questions that you have to answer in your artist statement. One, you have to identify the questions that guided your investigation. And then two, describe how your investigation shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision. There's just some examples below. Uh, from students that I put in there so you'll be able to see those for sure and that will really really help you I think I have about 15 in there for you to look at again don't copy but make sure you look at those would be really helpful so the questions that guide your investigation will be things like like if you were thinking about that technology idea that we talked about technology taking over maybe you say something like your questions um, one question that guided my investigation was you know what is wrong with society today or what are what are things that are influencing us um, differently than have been in the past and maybe technology is that answer or why is technology taking over so much so you want to make sure you identify questions so that's really important and then how you practice experiment and, and revised and again we'll talk about that more as you get closer to that so here's the scoring criteria, and this is how they're going to score you based on the percentages of what they look at. So you can read over those. And then here's an example. So this is um, a student from the 2019-2020 school year. So I'm going to show you these, and this is what it looks like in the college board, which is nice. We can see it here. Okay, so this is her 15 pieces. Her idea was to show what joy looks like in different people, starting from someone who is joyful but doesn't even smile to someone who is like super smiling and super excited and the joy is really obvious. So she started out with her father. You can see that you put the, the height and the width, materials and processes. So you can see that she did that for this one, this one, and this one. And you can see that her technical skill is growing as she goes as well. And then you have piece four, five, and six. And you can also see that her 
paper has gotten bigger. So that was one thing she was trying to show as well, that she started small and that she was getting bigger as she went. And then here's seven, eight, and nine. And again, we're getting bigger by 12 by nines now. And then we have 10, 11, and 12. And again, you can see the looks on the faces are getting more joyful as they go. And again, with the College Board, you know, it's really important to know that you cannot copy a picture of anyone. So if you find something online that you see, you cannot copy anything, right? Nothing can be copied um, or that's plagiarism. But she took these photos herself. So then she was able to draw them from that. So that's OK as long as you take the picture yourself. Um, so then you can see she got to 15. Really, really joyful. And then here's her written evidence. So you can read through these and there's two the two questions and you don't have to write a ton. Um, it's not it's 1200 characters max. That means like one letter is a character. So the first paragraph is about her sustained investigation. And then the second one is about her experimentation um, practice and revision. So you can read through this. Um, see, there's a question with a question mark there, right? So she's kind of talking about that. Notice she also shows, um, she writes in here, the artist that she was influenced by. It's important that you look for an artist that may not do the work exactly like you do, but she was looking to create realism. So she looked up a hyper-realism artist named Dirk Dismersky um, to emulate his hyper-realism. And then she's talking about how practice is shown throughout her pieces. She names specific pieces, like piece one, piece 12, piece 13, piece 5, 6, and 8, piece 5. So she's talking about specific pieces. That's really important um, when we look at pieces that have been scored in the past portfolios. Students that have that score better. So make sure you include some examples of specific pieces that you're talking about. Um, it just helps show that you kind of know what you're doing a little bit better. And again, there's a lot more of these examples. If you scroll down here, I can put them all the way at the bottom. So for 2020, these are the examples of students that submitted portfolios. And if you look at these, you can read, they all have written evidence in there and that will really help you. And their portfolios are all in there from um, all 20 pieces with their written evidence. So please take some time to look at those. It's going to be so helpful for you in kind of seeing what's going on as opposed to me just explaining it to you. All right. Thank you.